Hey, welcome in. So, that was a complete waste of time. Trudeau's snap election power grab during a pandemic achieved nothing. It did cost the taxpayers $600 million, so there's that. Thanks, Justin. And the result is nothing changes. So the liberal government, headed by Justin Trudeau, is still a minority government. Justin Trudeau is still prime minister. None of the other parties really achieved anything. Everybody's basically in the same place. Of course, Trudeau is claiming that he has a, a huge mandate now. <laughs> the Canadian people have hand, handed him a huge mandate with his uh, 32% of the popular vote. So like last time, the Conservatives actually took the popular vote. 33.96% for the Conservatives versus 32.24% for the Liberals. But it doesn't matter. In a parliamentary system, it really matters where those votes are, how they're clustered, and, well, it works out in the Liberals' favor. And I guess it's safe to say now that Aaron O'Toole's strategy of being liberal light, of just not really being a conservative, well, that didn't pan out. He did no better than the last guy, Andrew Scheer. Now, he did lose some votes to Maxime Bernier and the PPC. As we can see, they got 5.09% of the popular vote, which didn't cost them the election. It didn't cost them a minority victory in the election, but it hurt them. And, you know, if the Conservative Party itself doesn't offer anything to anybody who cares about, I don't know, like individual rights, well, some people are going to go elsewhere. Anyway, Trudeau's now claiming that this gives him a clear mandate because, of course, a minority government gives you a clear mandate and a, a clear mandate to deal with what? Well, reconciliation, which he's done nothing. Um, uh, climate change action. You know, Trudeau's been in for a while now. He's been in for years and we still have cars. What? What's going on? And of course, this means he's got a, a clear mandate for his, his plans for uh, affordable housing, uh, for which uh, so far he's done nothing. And of course, the sticky topic of uh, immigration probably isn't going to be a part of that because uh, I guess current year, as uh, Trudeau is so fond of saying, and I'm sure everybody's going to be thrilled with the uh, higher taxes <laughs> that are shortly coming. And then it is COVID plan, which is, of course, to demonize everybody who has, I think, very reasonable concerns about, I don't know, certain medical procedures, you know, procedures that on one hand are incredibly uh, effective. And on the other hand, after you get it, you still have to be terrified of your own shadow, which is because, and I'll borrow a phrase from uh, Trudeau here, I guess because of current year. So what are we still going to have? We, we've still got Trudeau. We've still got Trudeau to embarrass the nation. And, you know, the truth of this election was that the conservatives would have been, I believe, marginally better. Again, they just became liberal light, which I guess is better than Trudeau. It would have been marginally more fiscally responsible, maybe marginally less tyrannical around health. I do think they would have been much better on free speech. And now with this uh, mandate that uh, Trudeau's been given, yeah, there's no doubt that he's going to continue with his, his censorship bills and his you know, corporate media bailouts and subsidies because it's, it's clear that Trudeau wants to control what Canadians can say and what they can hear. And what they can read. Because don't forget, this is the guy who voiced his admiration for the Chinese Communist Party. And what else will Trudeau bring? Well, of course, we have a debt now that's grown by an order of magnitude very quickly. And I know that's a constant throughout the world. But somebody at some point is going to have to start uh, thinking in realistic terms. Because right now in Canada, it is a freight train that is speeding down the track. And eventually it is going to come off. And it ain't going to be pretty. And that's going to be when the, you know, lovely socialist dreams end. Because, you know, socialism's great until you run out of other people's money. And right now, we're living on other people's money. So again, what, what, is, what has Canada solved with this election? Well, it still has massive debt. Again, an order of magnitude higher. And that is a ticking time bomb. And it's only going to get worse with Trudeau. He said himself just a couple of weeks ago, he's not worried about economics. They're still going to have a segregated society between the vaxxed and the unvaxxed. And you can only expect his uh, rhetoric about those people uh, to get worse from here on out. They are still going to have a liberal obsession with climate change, which is an issue that Canada literally has zero, zero power to influence. I mean, Canada could shut down all oil production today and it will have no effect on the world. It, it, there will not be one less drop of oil used anywhere in the world, or in Canada. 
because guess what? Modern technological societies need energy. They need cheap, plentiful energy or else everybody starves to death. I know that Greta Thunberg has never mentioned that, but it's just an inconvenient fact. And I'm sorry to tell you this, but there's no electric semi trucks yet to bring, you know, your avocados to downtown Vancouver or downtown Toronto. So what else? We still have a woke PM. Oh, and on that topic, actually, uh, yeah, we still have blackface as well. <laughs> there's a new picture of Justin just came out, just came out conveniently. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Please subscribe, like, and share. That really helps me out. If you just like to listen, there's the podcast, Radio Baloney. It's on pretty much every platform. If you look for it, you will find it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.